<laughs> hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here and Wonder Puppy, who, as you see, is a lot bigger than six months ago uh, when I first made a video talking about this proposed ultimate self-defense championship thing <laughs> of of, uh, of a martial arts journey, Rocus Leonavicius. And today we'll be breaking down another episode. Guys, I didn't break down the last one. I broke down the first three. I think it was. I didn't do the fourth. I think this is the fifth, if I'm right. So I didn't do the last one because it really was nothing to break down other than a couple jokes I was going to make. Uh, but isn't he cute? Give 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 Wonder Puppy a thumbs up because, you know, he's still a puppy. But now he's, he's really big because it turns out he's like half terrier or something and not a uh, teacup chihuahua. He's a half chihuahua, half uh, terrier. But anyway, let's get into breaking down the ultimate self-defense championship as they face knife attacks using a marker. Guys, if you want to learn to defend yourself, it's the highest rated self-defense DVD on BJJ Fanatics and EffectiveSelfDefense.com. It's 20 five-star ratings on Fanatics and eight five-star thumbs up at uh, Effective Self-Defense. So if you really want to learn how to fight, it's a great deal, often on sale, four and a half hours long. I really suggest you get it. Uh, this one is titled Six Martial Arts Expert Locked In with a Knife Attacker. Well, that's pretty funny because I would say maybe one. Jeff Chan is a martial arts expert at sport fighting, not at self-defense. And I think as we've seen, the others are not martial arts experts at all. They're either beginners, uh, fakers, Icy Mike and, and Seth is a beginner, or they're mid-level uh Unfortunately, like Ramsey, because he's not aggressive, he's not athletic, he doesn't believe in self-defense, as you'll see, as you've seen throughout the series, kind of takes a mindset to turn on and counter-attack, to counter-ambush, okay? Um, so the, yet again, we will see this here, and Rokas is maybe now a mid-level guy. He was a beginner, maybe now he's a mid-level guy. Uh, but they're definitely not martial arts experts, other than maybe Jeff Chan, who's a brown belt in BJJ, and fought pro at least a few times at a lower level. Super stressed. Other guys are stressed. I have four black belts, I fought pro, and I sparred the top pros around the world for over 20 years. From getting hit in the head too hard. Ramsey's injured, and I still need to be a participant. My mind is just too full of everything. Comments on your knee? It's in bad shape. Uh, um, unfortunately, Ramsey did hurt his knee, and I've sent him some nice messages. Hey, man, I'm sorry you hurt your knee. I was found out in his channel a few days ago. As that uh, zombie dropped down on his head, his leg was locked out, and it tore his PCL, I think, which is pretty nasty. So the marker is going to be the knife. You're going to have four 20-second goes. Against a knife, your goal is to survive, to die less often, to minimize wounds and number of stabs. Stabbing pretty much more than slashing. Stabbing in your organs is what's going to kill you and make you bleed out. So you've got to minimize the number of stabs. Sometimes you're stabbed once or twice before you know it's on. And they might be to the body and feel like punches. If you're getting punched from behind and it feels like a punch, it's probably not a punch. It's probably a stab with a knife or screwdriver and uh, whatever. So they put on the anatomy shirts. And here is Ramsey Dewey up first. Round one, 20 seconds. And um, well, we'll talk about how bad they do and how I would do a little bit better, how you're never guaranteed to survive, uh, how difficult it is. But uh, knowing what to do with your hands, that you see they don't start in the right position, etc., is vitally important. All right, let's look at Ramsey. Good. When you're not feeling good physically, it puts a huge damper over how you're feeling every other way. So Ramsey's gearing up, got the anatomy shirt on. I don't train for a knife, and they're going to go all Jordan Chow. So he makes fun of self-defense, says it's a fantasy. And I kind of want to like Ramsey, but boy, you know, it kind of helps if you take martial arts seriously. So let's go back. Did he front kick and he clinches? Over how you're feeling every other way. I go in there. Feel okay, that's the most aggressive thing he's done other than knees, which is typically the only aggressive thing. Ramsey, peace, and harmony, uh, it'll all hopefully work out, which, you know, nowadays it doesn't. Armed attackers just kill you anyway after you give over your wallet nowadays. Compliance uh, doesn't always work. Okay, but he's tied up the wrist pretty good. He's got a two on one. Oh, he let go of the two on one baseball bat and stab, 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 stab. Why did you let go or not? Make sure you had good grip strength, being now he, he says he's a brown belt uh, in jiu-jitsu. Okay, let's break that down one more time. This might end up being a long video because I really want to break things down. 
Okay, doesn't know how to do with his hands. Acting like it's a sport fight. Front kick and in. Got two stabs until he got the hand. Now, had he controlled this all here, maybe he would survive if he quickly got, you know, an ambulance ride, right? If he quickly got to an EMT or got dropped off at a hospital, emergency room. But he let go of the two on one and then stab, 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 five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, about 14 slashes and stabs there. Now he's being defensive and low kicks. It's not a sport fight. Only one stab before he got a two on one baseball bat though. Now he should be able to tie that wrist and never let it go from the behind position. He got around to the back. And then I feel this little on the other side. And he should have hog tied that where you can dump a guy in wrestling. He should have gotten that right hand in there good and secured that. And no one should ever be, you know, should take like a minute, minute and a half to get out of there. 23, 4, 5, 6, 7, 28 stabs of death. Ramsey is very dead. Again, he actually got to a, a position and he just came in and this was just dumb. Like, and he's just clinching and forgetting its knife defense, forgets aggressiveness. And uh, now, mind you, his knee had just gotten hurt a few hours earlier. But this is not an MMA coach slash BJJ brown belt. Self-defense is part of jiu-jitsu. No matter what, you butt floppers want to change. The, the <laughs> MMA is no holds barred, as Valley Tudo as anything goes. Your skills should be able to apply to self-defense. And we see it sadly doesn't here. What are you doing with your arms? He's underhooking with his left arm, which is the one near the, the weapon hand. That's the one that's got to be there securing the weapon hand. And then the other one's got to come in for a two-on-one. And then he got to pass to a Russian tie. So can um, you got to know what to do with your arms. You got to be able to, the thing you needed going is to jut in with a Quan Sao or a dog catcher or a Jaws and hopefully pass to a Russian two-on-one or as they rebound, maybe that doesn't happen. And boom, you got to secure the baseball bat two-on-one position. So, uh, unfortunately, Ramsey died very badly. All four goes versus the knife. And here we see Sensei Seth throwing the best thing he knows to do, sidekicks, but he already got stabbed four times. Uh, even if he defended this attacker, he will probably bleed out before he gets to the hospital. Even if he got a bus ride, even if 911 was called right away, he would probably die just before they get to the emergency room. Unfortunately, his multiple stab wounds were assessed as fatal, leaving him with zero points. Zero points because they were fatal. Lands across, 45, 6, 7 stabs, just in closing. Doesn't, the, no one here knows what to do with your hands. And so far, everyone's been a right-armed attacker uh, with the knife, just as most will be. But, of course, they can switch hands. He's getting to the back, but just and slams them down. Takes another stab or two. Well, since he said yet again did a great job at fighting his opponent, he suffered multiple. So there's no proper Arimi proper entering because they don't know what to do with the hands. It's Kwansau dog catcher, boom the baseball bat. Or Kwansau dog catcher sticking the arm pass to Russian two on one. At least he's trying to tie up that arm. And kind of let go too much here, and now he's double unders, which isn't good. So he, he hip tosses the guy. Seth actually looks like he could be a decent grappler, like a Sambo and Sumo. He has some... Baby got back. He got big booty and big thighs. Like, he's decent at Sumo, could be decent at Sambo. Uh, eventually at Judo, if he got proper, regular training. To a back crucifix, that's nice. Look at that in my John Wick video, Fight Like John Wick, and the technique a John Wilkin video on my page or on Viking Samurai's page. But they're not tying up the weapon hand. And yes, you need to focus on that. Fight the man, fight the body, but fight the arm that's attached to the body. You should feel through sensitivity. And he lands a good sidekick, knocks the guy back. I used the lead led sidekick in a two on one stick attack when I was 16 years old. Uh, that took out one of the two attackers, basically, and helped me survive that bad attack. Taking all these stabs, even though he got it to the ground. You 
got to isolate the weapon hand and try and stop the pass over to the other hand. Now, cool there, lands a lead sidekick, sliding sidekick, gets to a back crucifix. you got to tie up that arm, and the back crucifix should have just stayed there, covered his head so the arm can't weave out, land elbows and hammer fists to the guy's face. Look at my crucifix, ultimate crucifix videos and all that. Um... I thought I was kind of going to do better in Shark Tank, to be honest. It is very difficult. I'm not saying I would survive every go, but I would have done better. So sound like, okay. And I can prove that. And at least increase your chances of survivability. The reactive double leg here again, Jeff Chan. And he took a couple stabs, threes. Maybe going to survive this as it is there. Got the arm pinned. He needs to not use the bicep, tricep. He needs to use structure and straighten out that elbow. But now he mounted instead of staying in the position that was controlling the weapon hand. And took six stabs, it looks like. I thought I could do the same strategy as I did in the circle, but this time, after taking them down, they were scrambling. He got to the wrist control once, and he got the double leg and pinned it down the ground. But right? instead of using bicep, tricep, you can't do muscular. You got to make a frame and pin it to the ground. And now he's just treating it like a sport fight and already been stabbed nine times, eight times. There's number nine. There's 13, 14, 15, 16. Took them down and they were able to- Even if he got elbows to the head, which he didn't there. Even if he got the knife away at that point from the attacker, he'd probably be dead. That's the reality of a knife attack. Keep the head, good. Goes for the reactive double, but I think it's two stabs to the back on the way down. So even the double leg, not a good option. And now he's just getting stabbity, stabbity, stabbity. Now, to make this more realistic with the red markers, guys, it should have been taped off, and the guy should have to hold at the bottom. Because if it's not at least a three-inch blade, you're probably not going to die anyway unless you get one of the major arteries slashed. So they should have to be holding down so at least you have a chance of a little bit of leverage uh, disarm. Stabbity, stabbity, stabbity. What are you doing? You're doing combat sports. So are they martial arts expert? Even Jeff is almost, yes, but only in the sport fighting sense. You know, and he's mostly a guy who relies on his speed still, even as far as his MMA or his jiu-jitsu skills are concerned. So, you know, he's not a black belt in jiu-jitsu yet, so is he a master? I don't know. Is it, are these other guys, fake kickboxing coaches, are not masters? Okay. And I see Mike did good in the other, in the knife attack that they did earlier, but then he let go of the arm, the two-on-one, he should elbow break or take down and have it. He already got stabbed twice, and his head's too low, haven't we harped on that before? And then he's getting dominated, now he's passing to a two-on-one, which is good, but he's already been stabbed five times. And the pin. Well, just keep the arm pin there. He let go for a second, why'd he let go for a second? And now he let go completely. What was the point of letting go? You're already there, it's a light switch. It's just like new newbie jujitsu guys, I'm gonna pause a second here. Newbie jujitsu guys, Attempting guillotine chokes. Oh, I almost had you, and then you let go. Yeah, the guy was actually about to almost tap or pass out, and then you let go to readjust your grip, and he gets all the blood flow back. It should be crush, 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 crush. Crush, extra crush, done. It should be on, like a light switch, not off, on, off, on, off, on, and they're doing that when they're getting wrist control, and then they're letting go. When they're getting a wrist pin on the ground or against the wall, and they're letting go. No, the other thing you got is headbutts biting, and you've seen some of my knife defense videos. I'm biting the shoulder, okay? I'm biting what I have available, okay? At least the, on the guy. Bite, headbutt, knees to the pills, but control the knife. Control the knife arm. Now control the knife arm there, get stabbity, stabbity, stabbity to death. And, oh, yeah, maybe jujitsu would be good instead of flopping on your back and getting dominated in side mount with no movement. The feet aren't on the ground. You're not bridging properly or doing anything properly because you're a fake self-defense coach. Eight stabs on this entry. Eight stabs already. Did he know what to do with his arms at all? No. I do. I teach it. Hold on. Let's just take a quick look. Let's just take a quick look. Let's just... Look up Dan the Wolfman Knife Defense. Best Knife Defense vid on all YouTube. We've played that earlier. Best Knife Defense concepts. It wasn't hard pressure tested enough, but all the concepts conceptually is there. 
how to go from the dog catcher and pass it to a Russian two-on-one, the highest percentage thing you could ever do against a knife. Uh, you also have to train baseball bat and some other wraps as well, jam and wraps, jam uh, as well. But you got to do baseball bat as well because baseball bat happens even when it just happens. Okay, so you got to be very good at baseball bat and then pass it to the two-on-one as well as the Quanto dog catcher jaws to the two-on-one realistic knife defense. I highly suggest you check out those videos. No, it's not easy. It's not easy. That's why you shouldn't be a white belt in jiu-jitsu that can't even win a less than amateur kickboxing match, a quasi contact on puzzle match with timeouts. Real even amateur level kickboxers train under pros and they have kickboxing fundamentals. You are not a kickboxing coach if you're less than amateur. A backyard brawl, a street beef, is less than amateur. Puzzle mat semi-contact, losing that, is less than amateur. Amateur is training under a real professional, a real pro, a real top instructor, uh, like Rafael Cordero, or Meiji Jitapak, or Song Tian Noe, or Ben Urquidez, like I have, and learning proper fundamentals. Training with Peter Arch or Ernesto Hoost, proper fundamentals. Okay, let's keep going here as Icy Mike dies, 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 because he's easy to hurt. You want me to prove it? I'll prove it. Easy to hurt. You think it's proven enough here? What's he do, doing? What's, what's all this stuff with the arms? He's already dead. Those wounds sustained, he'd already be bleeding out. But I think I took him with me. Took him with me? What? From your one crappy punch? You didn't take him with you. Okay, good skyscraper knees. I usually doesn't kill a guy. I fought under those rules. I fought with knees, kicks on the ground, a grounded opponent twice, and knees uh, one other time when it was just knees to that, but not kicks on the ground. And first, you know, UFC title contender, Jeremy one. Oh, look at him falling down all the time because his head's over his feet and he doesn't know how to wrestle. Doesn't know jiu-jitsu, doesn't know how to wrestle, doesn't know self-defense, doesn't know anything. His head is over his feet, his head's always low, he could get guillotined, I could break the neck, falling down, getting stabbed, Despite getting destroyed. The effort, I see Mike also receives zero points for this challenge. No, it's not just because he's small. It's because he's no good. It's because he has no fundamentals. <laughs> and he's the only guy that's had 70 hours of knife training and three big classes for a weekend where he knows he needs to get that Russian two-on-one. Like, he knows that is the number one position in knife defense. He did once okay earlier with a kick he didn't plan to the head that knocked the knife out of the hand. But, it, that, that, honestly, I praised him because it was the best out of anybody, but you should have never let him go of that arm in the first place. I keep Once you get control of the arm, try to stop the knife getting passed to the other hand and don't let control that arm and you structure, extend your arms or suck in your body instead of muscle. Small guys can fight or small real masters can fight and they can make up a huge disparity of force. And I fought big heavyweight and light heavyweight UFC champions for over 20 years. And the only guy I talk about it in my best grapplers video that ever the power and the skill was too much was Greco-Roman world champion Amir Ali Akbari, where the power was so unbelievable. And I mean, I trained with Dan Severn for Doom, Tank Abbott. I was a sparring partner to all those guys. Uh, one time with Cain Velasquez, uh, 14 months with Tim Sylvia, heavyweight champion, 6'8", 300 pounds, cutting down, uh, you know, all these giants. Ben Roth, Will Sanders, et cetera. Um, after that third one, I'm going to ask you last one. Yeah. I was like, I knew my legs were... So, the title of this, Six Martial Arts Experts, are definitely not martial arts experts. And so if you think your skills are even less than them, or, oh, I did a kickboxing class for two months, and you're fooling yourself, you're an idiot. You should be able to fight three unarmed attackers and feel confident fighting three guys. You are not a master if you're not comfortable fighting three guys or one guy that was elite. a high school wrestler since he was a kid, a uh, uh, college-level good athlete, big, strong, rated-out football player, college football player, or at least a BJJ blue belt, meaning you better be at least a BJJ purple belt. The old days, it was a blue belt. Nowadays, you better be at least a BJJ purple belt 
and an amateur level MMA fighter. Isn't always an That's the reality of things. Your wife or child oh, and maybe real self-defense expertise like failure. bouncing for time, over 20 years like I have. claimed that they could defeat a knife attacker. The reality is that it is not a simple task at all. The reality is it's not a simple task at all, but it would be nice if you had a plan. These guys are starting uh, MMA kickboxing and they don't know what to do with their hands. They don't know to jut in with the dog catcher jaws two on one. Or at very close range, a jam and punch and be ready to go to baseball bat immediately from the rebound if you aren't able to wrap that arm behind them, which I have a video on, combining two of the techniques that were shown in one of Rokas's videos. I need to switch that to become the predator, and I just started swearing at Aaron. Now we hear Clinton, who's the least athletic of the bunch other than his big legs, right? But he done self-defense reality-based training at the school prior to a year ago, right? And so he understands the drills and how to turn on the aggressiveness. And I would say he does better than Ramsey, who Ramsey had Even fought Matt was close pro, to I guess, in kickboxing and MMA, low level China back in the day, uh, and is a BJJ brown belt now, and yet Clinton at least knows to turn it on. Uh, but he didn't know how to close here. And he's just an over under. And dying, 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 and oh, now you're sport fighting a guy with a knife. Yeah, that doesn't work out too good either. Sometimes a good punch, but if you're going to do that, you vector away with a drive-by long hook. I do show that in my concepts, or at least a jet style axe hand to the neck. Good counter aggressiveness here, but again, where are we not controlling? Are you trying to make a head tilt? Um, which you did earlier in a page on. Yay, headbutts! Yay, headbutts! Yay, knees! Yay, aggressiveness! Uh, but you gotta control the weapon. And if you know how to control an arm properly, you're also controlling their body, you're connecting to their center, you have sensitivity, you understand base, you can feel where they're at, you can use Kazushi. Uh, these concepts that none of these guys really understand, other than maybe to an extent Jeff, but not the multiple attacker weapon reality based scenario. Despite okay. a great show of heart, like the rest of the competitors, would I have died? Any points. I'd, I'd, maybe two out of the four times I would have died. Maybe. I often show I can do better, but. But if I survive two of the times, like one time I didn't even get touched, and one time I only got some nicks in, in spaces that would were considered by the judges oh, survivable. Yeah, I think I could do that. I think I, do that. I think I would show you that. Switch uh, hands. But unfortunately, an ultimate self-defense championship. Hey, why why did we let go and start wrestling the guy instead of controlling the weapon here? Let's go back to Rokas. Okay, that was the end of Clinton getting stabbed 18 times. Despite a great show of heart, Ramsey, the competitors supposedly higher Clinton skills than Clinton, and then it was my turn but he has never really defense. shown it because he doesn't believe in self-defense. Yeah. It's pretty important martial arts to believe in martial. Front kick, trying to get the arm, and now he gets a wrap. I don't love trying to get that wrap right away because you saw he got stabbed three times in it. Pawing, fishing for the arm. He's fishing for the arm. There's no entry on the arm. And now he's got a wrap, but he already got stabbed oh, three times. Like there. Okay, so okay. Sure not Are you going to try to shihonagi under the arm? You know, you get your back taken, you might get your throat slashed. I maybe would have tried it and gone under that arm. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. But he had the control, and I wanted to open it up. If you're here, you can kind of Kimura this way instead of this way, instead of double wrist lock way, right? You could be trying to get that behind his back, or at least leverage him down to the ground. Front kick, left arm underhook, which allowed the right arm freely to stab. His left arm's underhook. Guys, have we learned that maybe your left arm shouldn't be underhooking? If they've got the knife in their right hand, as they usually do, statistically speaking, Round three for Rokas. Oh, this is gonna be great. I'm gonna use my Aikido There's a skills. I'm gonna use rubber barrel in the in, in the front, which yeah, maybe someone should pick it up and use it as a barrier. I don't know if you're strong the enough, the these guys, the they got guns like me, uh, to pick up a barrel and use it, and, you know, as a shield and then throw it into somebody. So I want to watch this takedown again. Let's watch this third go. 
again. Oh, fishing for the arm got hit right away off the bat, right? He was underfishing for that wrap that obviously someone caught him. I want to be on the outside two on one or baseball bat in front. I don't want to be here, really. Though I know some crowd and people, crap my god, people teach that and stuff. Should I know what to do from there? Sure. Have I gone there instinctively? Sure. But I don't let go of that control when I have that elbow. I try to pop it, push his wrist, try and break his elbow there, try and jolt it, try and get behind his back, hammer lock him as you scoot around the corner. Okay, we're slop wrestling now. He ended up on top. Good for him. Somehow the arm must be tied up underneath. And just with the pressure of him tripoding, his shoulder or chest must be controlling the weapon hand. And he decides to stay there. Legitimately good job, Rokas. He survived, and he's going to get two points. And then there was a slice at the end, but it was after the time, so no, it doesn't really count. Let's watch this whole go again. Round four, front kick, no. Oops, stab in the gut, that is survivable. I think there was two stabs, actually. It's hard to see there. Now it's up high to the neck, in which case you got a shoulder level. You keep your neck back strong so it doesn't slice on the way out, which I showed in my video. Take down and That's half like, guard, I'm here. I'm like, this is and not it's fishing. And if it flays your face off, fine. You got to stop it from slicing deep enough to get that artery. If that's the case, right? You keep it tight. You bite the thumb. Okay, you bite the hand. Despite my attacker slashing my throat once I let go after the bell, I soon learned that the judges were just So six guys went. This is this the end of six guys? So six guys went. Is that the only time someone was not killed? So they get two points. I think Rokas gets two points, and I think that's the only points awarded. In if I'm right. Which, I mean. Tells you how difficult it is, yes, but that's very difficult if you don't have a game plan. Okay, and you control your emotions and your fear. A lot of these guys show fear. Rokas did better in his first MMA fight than he did his second, as a guy who was big and athletic and chilly looking. Mentally, he had fear. He did a breakdown of Rokas' second MMA fight. He did better in the first when he had less skills, because he showed less fear because the guy didn't look as scary. So these guys don't know how to deal with fear. I bounce some bigger guys, multiple guys, and weapons my heart pounding. I'm like, um, yeah shit. and, and I give you 16 stories at least and like about it street jiu-jitsu instructional on BJJ fanatics and now they're showing the next one two big dudes I'm hoping it's a full-on fight against two rugby players like that's 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 you know most martial artists black belts even can't handle a football player a wrestler a big strong roided out athlete my jujitsu catch wrestling was always a little 5% sloppy on purpose because I wanted to train realistically and I went against the biggest, strongest weighted out MMA fighters around the world for 20 years. Smaller, bigger, everything so I can flow like a small guy. I can transition and use sensitivity, but I could also go against the big guys, which yes, I did, even though I don't have a lot of that on video. I went with all these big, huge, strong roided out motion shape dudes and that's how you really pressure test your martial arts let's look at my best knife defense video on youtube it's three minute highlight let's talk through this just to wrap things out hopefully things are still uh, recording there and so some of the things i discussed here we can see in action when i tell someone to come at me i tell them to come at me Quan Sao pass two on one and then I used enough jolt on his elbow to get him to drop the knife. He had, he came at me left hand overhand to trick me. I instinctively went in and then double wrist lock. There's a pass, yet I ended up an over-under. I don't want to be an over-under, but look how I broke his structure, and the knife magically appeared in my hand. Real pressure against the wall. Pass to two-on-one. That's pretty real pressure testing there, people. Showing a drive-by if they're hiding the arm behind their their uh, hip and they're walking up at you with intent this is very important you go out of 45 and jut out of there i saw a stabbing a guy on a porch don't just sit there and let the guy stab you if he threatens you you got to take it seriously 
pass the two on one. Have tight control with your body. It's not muscular. This isn't just my size. Have control of the elbow, tightness to your body and sensitivity and know when to move. You gotta have base, you gotta have structure, you gotta have sensitivity, attributes. You gotta have aggression, an attribute that Ramsey is sadly missing. You have to believe you have a chance to survive to survive. For 6'4", Big Henry here, and see I'm tied up in, in two on, before it took a long time to pass the two on one, that wasn't the plan, I ended up in baseball bat. I ended up in baseball bat here on 6'4", 265, Big Henry. Boom, and the rebound happened, so I ended up in baseball bat. No, I was trying to pass it to the two on one. Boom, and baseball bat on the opposite side, I bite his shoulder and then pass. Using Kazushi, driving into him, forward pressure, and then I felt it, and boom, I could pass the two-on-one, get a gift wrap, hammer him, and now I have the knife. Fence, I'm sorry, and then boom, I see a knife. I parry out of there and run, which, of course, you don't always have the option, even in a convenience store, you'll trip over stuff. Now, up by the neck, it happens. So I talk about that earlier. At the end of the rope is this thing. you got to have the head pinched to not let it slash you deep. It might shave you, might fillet you pretty good, but you, you want to die less often. You want to increase your survivability. Oh, baseball bat happened. Oh, it's by my neck. Oh, and John Wickham in the throw. Because I have footage of Keanu Reeves training that. Ooh, a neck spin. And run, because he's still got the knife. Abduction now, coming with me. And nope, I got the knife. This time, leverage is important. Teapot stabs himself with his own knife. He surprised me. I said, what were we just doing? Abduction holds, not live attacks. And he came with a, a live attack there. Lucky Gatami. Hey, isn't that Aikido, Daito, Ru, Aki, Jiu Jitsu, TMA stuff that doesn't work? Yeah, it's probably good to know a Waki Gadani. I didn't get the knife that time. I ran. I threw him and ran. If you're locked in a room, maybe you can't. If you got to defend other people, I'd maybe have to follow him up to the ground and re engage towards the weapon hand and then elbow and headbutt and bite as necessary. Two on one, kicks, and then kind of an elbow breaker, and then kind of a Kodigishi out of there. Look at my no BS Aikido, Dan the Wolfman versus BJJ MMA. When Rokus was a nice Aki boy asking me how to make Aikido better, there is a first interview where we got along so nicely. I actually compiled all my standing locks and Kodigishis and stuff for him. First, I did it as a joke for a troll on True Dog, and then I did it for him. So anyway, guys, I hope you learned from this. Get my combatives and street jiu-jitsu instruction all on effective self-defense. And BJJ Fanatics now. It wasn't earlier today. 46% off. 46% off. I think that's like $42.50 for four and a half hours from a guy whose fourth black belt was Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And from Gokur, Shevichian, and Judo G in the belt, one only four or five in the world to have both. And in Daito Juko, Kudo. A very hard, real style that Rokas finally looked at. I suggested he do so. And the first in Taekwondo. But I was the first black belt and wasn't totally in dojo. It took me like seven years or so, I think, until I got my black belt. So uh, anyway, guys, that's it. Please thumbs up, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the comments down below. I hope this will help increase your survivability. If you see a knife run. If a guy threatens you, run. Don't stick around and hope he doesn't stab you. He might just walk up and stab you. Compliance used to often work pretty good at a higher percentage, and nowadays you hand the money and they just go stab. I talked about that earlier. Look at what I talked about earlier and the other breakdowns. I hope it helps you stay safe, and I'll catch you on the flip side. And oh, Jeff Chan, you're going to collab with me. Kevin Lee, I said I would play patty cake with you if we can break down some Wing Chun. You want to play patty cake and then MMA spar and then grapple? I'm down, man, even though I'm old. I'm 46 with a bad knee. But hey, you do the best you can. Take care, everybody. Kaboom.